This is the second of two recap videos on partial fractions. And in this video, we will look at a single example that has a repeated linear factor in the denominator. 3 plus 2x squared over 1 plus x all squared times 1 minus 4x. So it's the 1 plus x that's the repeated linear factor because it's squared. And it turns out that an expression like this can always be written in the form of the right hand side where a, b and c are constants. So the repeated linear factor has to occur twice in two terms on the right hand side. It appears in its linear form and its repeated linear form 1 plus x and 1 plus x squared. Now it will often turn out that the a above the linear form of the repeated term comes to 0 and it is in this case. The question says show that a equals 0. But you can't be sure of that at the outset and that's why we need those three terms written out as they are. So we're going to put the right hand side on a common denominator of 1 plus x all squared times 1 minus 4x. And because the denominators will be identical on either side we will omit them and just concentrate on the numerators. So we've got 3 plus 2x squared on the left hand side is equal to a now to get the denominator to be 1 plus x squared times 1 minus 4x I've got to multiply a by another 1 plus x and 1 minus 4x plus b 1 plus x squared is being multiplied by 1 minus 4x so I need to do that to the numerator and finally c needs to be multiplied by 1 plus x or squared. Now that would be each side on the same denominator. And now we're going to put in two values for x, one at a time, that make the bracket 0. So first of all I'm going to put in x equals minus 1. Now if I put in x is minus 1, this term will be 0 and this term will be 0. So on the right hand side there's only the middle term that will contribute. So we get 3 plus 2 lots of minus 1 squared substituting in the minus 1 is equal to b times 1 minus 4 times minus 1. Left hand side becomes minus 1 squared is 1 times 2 is 2 plus 3 is 5. In the bracket on the right hand side we've got minus 4 times minus 1 is plus 4 plus another 1 is 5 so 5 equals 5b so b must be 1. Now I'm going to put in x equals a quarter which is the value that will make the other bracket 0. So if I put in x as a quarter this bracket would be 0 this bracket will be 0 so there's only the third term involving C that's going to contribute on the right hand side. So 3 plus 2 times 1 quarter squared on the left hand side is equal to C multiplied by 1 plus 1 quarter all squared. Now on the left hand side a quarter squared is a sixteenth, two sixteenths is one eighth, three plus an eighth is twenty five over eight. And on the right hand side one plus a quarter is five over four, square it we get twenty five over sixteen. So if I multiply by sixteen over twenty five that will give me c on the right, multiply by sixteen over twenty five. So I'll have to do the same to the left hand side and we find the 25's cancel and the 16 over 8 cancels to 2. So C is equal to 2. So it now just remains to show that A is 0 and we do that by looking at the coefficient of one of the terms, coefficient of x squared. Because this is an identity we must have the same amount of x squares on the left as we do on the right. So let's have a look up the top. How many x squares have we got? We've got 2 on the left hand side. If I multiply out the first term on the right, the minus 4x times x will give me minus 4x squared times a. So the amount of x squares will be minus 4a. And 
there are none in the B term, but on the C term, I've got an X squared times C. So that will be plus C lots of X squared. So on the left hand side I've got 2x squared and I've got minus 4a of them there and I've got plus c of them on the right. But I know that c is 2 so 2 is equal to minus 4a plus 2 so 2 minus 2 is equal to minus 4a 0 is minus 4a and so a is 0 divided by minus 4, which is 0. So we've now shown that a equals 0. It didn't ask us to write out the partial fractions. The question just asked us to find b and c and show that a was equal to 0. And that completes the recap.